doing is plotting your points, Sven. So it says the endpoints end point, of the axis. It doesn't tell if it's the major axis or a minor axis. So we need to understand some basic things here to be able to do this. But the, before I'm going to do that, I'm going just to plot the points. That's all I'm going to do is just plot the points. It says these, these are endpoints. So that means plus or minus 4 means I have points 4, 0 and negative 4, 0. 0, 5, and 0, negative 5. Does everybody understand how they presented them and how we can plot them up there, right? So this is going to be 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then the endpoints is 5 and negative 5. So 0, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK? Now, we know that where the two axes intersect is the center, right? Well, you can obviously see that they intersect at the origin, which is 0, 0. Or in the formula, we represent those with the variables h and k. So guess what? We have h and k completed. Cool. Now we just need to figure out what a is and what b is, right? Now remember, the distance from the center to the vertices is always longer than the distance from the center to the covertices. I erased my little pictures, but you guys should already have those from your old notes. Do you guys remember the distance from the center to your vertices? is always larger than the distance from your center to your covertices, right? So obviously, what is our longer length from our center to one of our vertices? What's the longer length? Major. 5. So we can say that <coughs> that length is 5. So that means that's going to be A, right? Yes? And then this distance, so that's my vertice, and that's a vertice. This length is B, which is 4. That means that's a covertice. And that's a covertice. And if you guys look at your notes from last class or from two class periods or last class period, you'll see something that's very similar to this. So remember, so A is always larger than B for an ellipse. A is always larger than B for an ellipse. So this is now what we call my major axis, right? That's the side that my vertices lie on is the major axis. If my major axis is vertical, the A is under the Y. Um, is under, is under the y in the, equation, in the formula. So you guys look at my two formulas that I have here. Here's the two formulas. These will be provided for you for your quiz. This is the one where the major axis is vertical because your a squared is under the y. So I write in that formula. So it's x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared equals 1. Well, do we already know what h and k are? Yeah, 0 and 0. Do we know what b is? b is always smaller than 4. It, or b is always smaller than a, so that's 4. a is always larger than b, that's 5. Since it's vertical, we know that a goes under the y. If this was a horizontal major axis, then it would be under the x. So now, you just plug in your information. So x minus 0 squared over b, which is 4, <coughs> squared You guys see what I did? Anybody have any questions with that? So now, we just simplify this. So it's x squared over 16 plus y squared over 25 equals 1. And that's your final answer. That's all you guys had to do. So the hard part about these, it's not really